There we go. Hi, everyone. This is episode six of Let's Be Social. I'm B, your host, and I have a special guest on today. His name is Rob Novelin. He is located in New York, New York State, and um, he is an author. And I just wanted to welcome you to the show. And I'm happy to have you here. And we're going to talk a little bit about your books, uh, how you got started in writing, and I'm going to let you have the the platform so welcome to the show no oh, thank you I'm, I'm happy to be here um so the way i got started uh i'd say i was about six or seven years old and uh i was at my i'd always be at my grandma's house and i noticed she had a bookshelf and it was loaded with stephen king books and i was i had no idea really what a book was, what a book was right. besides that Besides like kids books that my mom, uh, my mom read to me mm -hmm. and I asked her, I said, what are, uh, who's Stephen King? And she said, he's a, a horror writer. And I, and I was just like, he's a writer. And I had no idea what that was. And, uh, I was always fascinated by the covers. And then my grandma said, well, you read these. And I remember going to read one and I just put it back and I was like, "Ugh, reading's not for me. And she's like, she's like, ah, she's like, maybe when you're older. And I was like, no, I'm like, it, it's boring. I'd rather watch a movie. And then a few years went by and I just remember always looking at the covers and thinking, you know, what's it about? And that's when I started wondering, like, oh, my, maybe I should read one of these. And uh, I ended up doing that. I ended up reading Carrie. And because I figured I'll pick a shorter book. <laughs> Just to, just to, you know, get through it faster and see if I like it. And I loved it. Mm -hmm. And then I thought I, I kind of want to write something myself. And next thing I knew, I, I had like a 30 page short story and I was only nine years old. And uh, it just it just went from there and I would continue to write short stories. And I didn't even know what a novel was. And I uh, just it. uh it got to the point where I was constantly writing short stories as like a teenager. And then by the time I was around 17, 18, I stopped doing it because it was like, I had no one to read the stories. None of my friends read and I would just, I would still read, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to give up writing. And then for about, I'd say from 18 into my, you know, early twenties, there was no writing at all, and I wanted to, but I thought, you know, if no one's going to read it, I don't, I'm not going to get enjoyment out of it. Because for me, I love reading and I love writing, but if no one's there to read it, I don't know. It's like it almost like takes the magic away because no one's getting to experience that. And then I met my wife, and we were just friends. I I met her when I was about. Uh, well, I met her when I was 18, but we didn't actually start really hanging out a lot until uh, I was around 22, 23. And then one day my mom comes into my room and she was over the house. She was over our house. And my mom said, hey, I found a bunch of your short stories. And my wife goes, short stories. What do you mean? And I was like, I like to write. I said, I used to write short stories and I would just laughing going through them and I was like god I'm a bad writer and, and she's like when did you write these and I told her I said I, I wrote those like when I was like nine through 18 years old I'm like I'm like I, I don't ever want to read those and she read one of them and she said for a little kid these aren't bad she's like they definitely need work but they're not bad and I told her, I said, well, I was like, I've always wanted to write, but I'm like, no one's going to read my stuff. And I don't know how to even get a book out there. I was like, I can type it up, but I don't know how to, you know, uh, have a publisher look at it. And I'm like, there's no way to get my stuff out there without it costing money or, you know, having like a big name uh, back me up behind it. <laughs> and she told me, you know, there's there's a way she said there's uh, through Amazon. And I was like, Am I'm like, Amazon's where you, you buy stuff. I'm like, I don't, I don't think they're going to take my book. And she told me, well, write a book. And she said, and there's a way to self-publish. And she made it sound like maybe they'll take your book. She didn't 
she didn't tell me at first if you write a book and put it up they might send it back a few times saying there's some, something wrong with it because that would end up happening but eventually they'll publish it as long as there's nothing like on the guidelines that that you're writing something that they that they're not okay with which you know some things i i agree shouldn't be written but she told me she said so write a book and she said i'll edit it for you because she went to uh uh what she went to college for was actually um uh, a couple different things like sociology and criminology and she said her teacher would actually have her go through kids homework and would tutor kids and she'd actually fix stuff and show people how to write papers and she said so i'll edit your stuff for you awesome yeah and uh next thing i knew i had I, it was only 120 pages and i, I told her i said it's my first novel and i said it's uh, it's called manifest and she said it's only 120 pages and i said yeah she goes that's like a long short story or like a novella she said that's not really a a full-length novel she's and she's like did you she's like what'd you write about and when i told her she said there's no way that you can make 120 pages with what you just told me she's like that's like three four hundred pages and i was just like i'm like well read it so she reads through it and tells me she said it's really good but you put detail where it's not needed and then not enough where it's needed okay and when she told me that, I said, well, go through and, you know, highlight the things that need to be fixed. And she sends me 120 pages of almost everything highlighted. And I just, I threw it. I was like, I'm not, not doing it. I'm like, I'm done. And she told me just, just, she's like, like just do it. She's like, I'll help you. So she'd help me with it and make, you know, show me how to, how to properly rewrite stuff. And that's when I started doing like long form to where I realized, oh, there's a whole lot of story here. And I'm not even, it was like I was, um, it's like I was not telling the story properly. It's almost like I was trying to tell it to like the page instead of like to an actual person or to myself to get them to understand the whole thing of it. And uh, by the time I was done editing it, it was a little over 300 pages and then she went back through and next thing I knew it grew by another hundred almost. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I told her, I was like, I think it's ready to be put out. And she said, well, she's like, I'm going to want to go through it one more time just to make sure there's nothing, you know, misspelled. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I don't really want to do that. I'm like, I've had enough of this book. I'm like, I want it out of my life. And it was weird. It's like, um, I don't know if you experienced this, but when I work on a book, I go through it so many times just to make sure it's good. Like it's, you know, how I want it that I get sick of it. And I'm like, I just need it to be out in the world. I'm done with it. I don't want to spend any more time on it. And it gets like that for me. And that's how I know it's, it's, it's getting there. And uh, she told me she was going to start uh, working on it, you know, just making sure nothing's wrong with it. And then she designed a cover for it. And ever since then, she's been my cover designer because I don't know how she does it. She didn't go to college for, you know, um, art or any, anything like that. And I told her, I was like, this is amazing. And next thing I knew, I told her, while I'm getting this book, pub, uh, getting this book put up on Amazon, I said, I'm going to work on another one. And next thing I know, that one, uh, it was a shorter book because I was like, I just want to get it out. But I'm like, I'm going to write a shorter story. And then within three years, I had five books up. And I just was, I was getting like addicted to it to where I was like, I love it. And it was nonstop. And then, um, then my wife got pregnant and I was like, oh, I'm like, we're going to have a kid. I'm going to have no time to write. And I started to worry. And I told her, I said, I'm, I'm just going to stop writing. And she's like, why would you stop writing? I said, because we're going to have a kid. I'm like, I'm going to have a full-time job. And I'm like, and probably a part-time one. She's going to have to stay at home. I'm like, I'm not going to have time to write. Mm -hmm. And she said, then write at nighttime when like we're, and she goes, once, you know, uh, her and my daughter go to bed, she goes, right then. I said, but I'll be tired. Yeah. And she said, if you love doing it, you're going to do it anyways. And next thing I knew, I would be up 10 to 12 at night 
uh, working on it. And then um, the last book I got published, unfortunately, was in uh, 2019. And it's because I've been working on this. Uh, I was, it was like, um, well, before I tell you all that, I'm going to tell you what happened right before my daughter was born. Um, we're in the hospital and I have the laptop with me and I'm working on the book sitting by my wife who uh, at the time was just my fiance and she's, you know, close to going into labor to where like the next day they're saying the baby's probably going to be born. Mm -hmm. And the doctors and the nurses are all saying to me, you know, they're like, Hey, what, uh, what you doing with the laptop? And, and I didn't want to tell them just because it's like, it's my own little world. This, this has nothing to do with anybody in the room. I have to keep it in. Yeah. I don't want to tell anybody. And, uh, my wife said, Oh, he's a, he's a writer. And mm -hmm. they said, Oh, they said, you're writing in the, the hospital. They're like, you got to you, you're dedicated. And I was like, I got to get this done before my daughter's born. I'm like, if I can get this done before she's born, I can get it published. And then I can take some time off from writing. Yeah. And literally the night, she, like the night before she was born, I, I was putting it up on Amazon. Wow. Good yeah. Time. Yeah. And, uh, and then I started writing a new book about a year later. I, you know, I took about a year off and, and this new book, I, uh, I wrote about something I've never written before. And it was, it was, uh, like, a, it was a horror, but the main character was racist, like an, an old racist man. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, he was like, I don't, I don't want to give too much away, but it, um, there were like a bunch of uh, the story pretty much revolves around this group of young kids who are in the early teens and he's like the old, you know, crotchety guy in the neighborhood who mm -hmm. can't stand little kids. Yeah. And while I was writing that, I told my wife, I said, I'm not publishing this. I said, this is going to get turned people away from me. Yeah. I'm like, just because of what it's about. And she's like, why? And I said, it's about racism. I said, I'm white. Can I write about that? And she said, if you're on the correct side. And I said, well, the old guy is racist. I said, and I'm writing about a racist character but I'm not making it sound like, like to where if someone reads it, they're not going to think, wow, the author is racist. They're just going to think he's writing about someone like that. Yeah. And I put it in the drawer after I got about a hundred pages in, and I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'll go to it once I feel like, um, like I'm like mentally, um, like I know enough to write it. Cause I didn't feel when I was writing it, like I even know enough to write this. I don't know enough about history. You know, I, I have to learn a lot more. So then I started writing uh, Christmas Fear. And while I was writing Christmas Fear, this book, the book that I'm working on now, I ended up <laughs> putting it away. And I told my wife, I said, ah, I'm like, it's too much to do. So next thing I know, I did the number one thing all us writers do. So I don't know if you've ever done this. Started working on another book. <laughs> yeah. So I had two books that were each over 100 pages in, not finished, yeah. put in a drawer. And then, <laughs> and then I start working on another one. And it was like a psychological horror. And But I had a huge twist ending that I'm I'm still working on, even though I'm working on another book. And uh, I got about maybe 30 pages into that. And I said, I'm going back to Christmas here. I'm like, I, I started with that one really to where I was comfortable with it. I'm like, I'm going to finish it. And uh, I got it all written. And then when I started reading back through it, I was like, uh-uh, nope. I'm like, second draft. I'm like, I got to change a lot of stuff. Just, it, just, it didn't feel, um, it just felt like it was rushed. Mm -hmm. To where it was like, you know, those days when you're sitting down on the laptop, you're writing something and then you think to yourself, I'm just trying to write this scene to get it written. I'm not putting in the detail it needs. And I realized I was doing that. So now I'm going through and doing it again. And I'm hoping to have it out uh, later, that like probably December of this year. Very good. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much the the, the long story. Sorry if I talk too much about that. 
It's okay. So you have a total of five books right now? On I've got one, two, three, four. So I've got technically seven, okay. but one of them is a very short story and it's available for like the uh, Kindle yeah. on Amazon to where it's not, it's not long enough to even be a book. Yeah. Um, it's probably like, I think about 15, 20 pages. And then I've got another one that is more of a sample mm -hmm. for a much larger book that I, I do want to write in the future. But I just, I have a lot of research I have to do before I write it. Sure. So I just wrote like a little excerpt for it. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, and how do you find, do you find um, getting yourself out there as a self-publishing author difficult? Do you find it hard to like market yourself and get sales and that kind of thing? Do you find that challenging? In the beginning, no. I thought it was rather easy and I uh fooled myself because I would uh I would I'd advertise on you know Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, you know, every platform that I could think of. And I would do that thing where you can boost uh boost the advertisement yeah. and you know put 10, 20 bucks on it and it'll reach a certain amount of people. I would do that when I first started. And I found it was, you know, it was getting a lot of people viewing it. And next thing I knew, I had sold 70 books. Oh, good for you. Yeah. And I thought that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I realized I got to work harder. <laughs> because while, yeah, 70 books is, is cool, it would be cool if it was 70 books for the, like, one novel. Mm -hmm. But it was it was the five altogether that sold 70 which I'm, I'm still proud of it, but yeah. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to have a lot more people read it than did. And I found the first book I ever wrote, that one had the most sales. And it was like, everybody that I knew wanted it. Everybody's like, Oh my God, autograph my book. And I was like, wait, you want my autograph? And I just thought that was, I thought it was like silly almost. Cause I was like, it, but you know me, I'm like, why do you want my autograph? I hear you. Yeah, I'm and they're like, yeah. they're like, you're a writer. And I was just like, yeah, but we, us writers, sit in a room by ourselves in the quiet and write stuff and get lost in our heads. I'm like, we don't, you know, do the whole people know you. I'm like, I don't want anybody knowing what I look like. And I'm like, unless it's like in the writing community. But yeah, it was like people who didn't write or didn't didn't read. Uh, people I worked with would be like hey they're like I uh, read your book and I'd be like I thought you don't read and they're like well I know you mm -hmm. I was like yeah and they're like, I read your book and they're like I like it I'm kind of shocked you wrote that mm -hmm. I'm like I'm like oh because of how messed up it is they're like no it's good they're like but I just wasn't expecting you to be a good writer and I'm like why and they're like because you don't come off like a writer mm -hmm. they're like writers come off like quiet old people and I was just like, wow. And I just, I've always been told I don't come off like a writer. And it's just, I don't know. It's, I, uh, I find the more that, um, the more that people that find, I don't know if this happens for you, the more people that find out, it's almost like I get not embarrassed, but like shy and anxious. Because mm -hmm. the place that I work now, the second somebody found out I write, everybody found out and then they're all like hey it's all it's the author and then everybody's pulling my books up on their phones showing the the book covers and being like hey rob wrote this and i'm just like and they're like you write books and i'm like yeah i write books and they're like why are you why don't you tell anybody i'm like i don't want anybody knowing <laughs> but i want everyone to know but it's like i it's almost like that thing where it's like, I want to be humble, but I don't want to be humble. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, marketing, it's always been something where when I really try to market, it goes good, but it's that I have that laziness about it where I just want to write. Yeah. I hate going on social media and having to, to advertise. And then next thing I know, I'm checking my phone every five minutes to see if I got another like. And I hate, I hate the whole like thing and the, 
oh, did somebody comment? Because I've gotten a lot of good comments, but I, I've gotten one bad comment that just hit me. Yeah. And it just, I didn't write for probably three weeks. Some guy just tore my books apart. And I said, have you ever read any of them? Or is this just, and he said, I don't need to read them. He, he's like, I can tell by the book covers. He's like, they're trash. And it's just like, and I thought, oh, this guy's just, just this guy probably wants to write, doesn't know how to, and just, or hates, hates books and just wants to trash talk somebody. So yeah, I called it off though. Well, I mean, having five books on Amazon, that's quite a feat. Even just putting one on is like the, the amount of work and time that goes into just one book is, you know, a phenomenal feat and to actually put it out there and have it on where people can buy it. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive that you've done five already and you still are working on more. So. Thank you. You know, I think it's, it's, uh, it's hard. Yeah. I'll say that it's every book gets harder. I don't know if you have that experience, but every book for me, it's like, Oh my God, how am I going to do this? And I just find myself doing it. And you, you get to that point where you'll be, writing a story and you get on that one sentence where you're almost like I got writer's block or I don't know how to say it. Next thing you know, you're writing. I'm a crappy writer. I should just stay a garbage man. I'm not meant for this. I am fooling myself. I don't have the skill. And then you're like, Oh my God. And then you just shut the laptop and then you, you know, you go back to it the next day. Yeah. That that's happened to me countless times, but I just keep doing it. And I find no matter what time of year it is, if I'm getting another book put out, it's like Christmas. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, you know, people are going to read this and they're hopefully they're going to like it. Yeah. And it's like, I do that thing where not, I don't try to shock people, but the things I write about are, you know, extremely not like traumatizing, but just graphic. Yeah. And every time I think I'm crossing a line, everyone's like oh it's really good I like the I, I love that book because of this mm -hmm. and I'm like wait that didn't turn you away and they're like no and I'm like not even this part and they're like no that was really good and I'm like oh and it's like kind of shocked because I'm like am I screwed up or are you people just demented because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like you know it's I'm like some of these books I, I think are too much yeah. and my wife a couple of her friends have, have read them and been like Oh, I love, love it. And I'm like, that book is like horrible. It's just, uh, it's like every, it's like you always try to, the a couple books I've written, it's to where I show you the person's like present, like present day. And then I go into their past and show how they became that way. And then I go back into present day and then I go into the future. And it's like, I almost make you hate the person feel bad for the person and then love the person while hating them. Yeah. And it's, I love doing that. I don't know why, but I love doing that. It's okay. a lot of fun. That's cool. So, and I love the fact that your wife is involved, like in the whole process and help support you through all of that. That's amazing. The fact that she encouraged you, she helps you with the editing stage and, you know, does the covers and stuff like that. That's such a nice um thing to have so you're not having to worry about that part you know and that she's so yeah. supportive of your of your work it's really nice to have yeah if she yeah she uh I owe all of it to her because if it wasn't for her I would not be doing any of this sadly to say I wouldn't be doing any of it she so, obviously believed in you to to keep moving forward I mean she's she's definitely picked fun when, you know, I write a book about a mattress that's haunted or <laughs> or uh, a book about a cat that, you know, uh, sucks some guy's soul out of him and then he becomes the cat. Right. And then the cat becomes the guy, you know, she uh, she told me a few times, Rob, in this story, you have a guy going out to buy a mattress and he sees one on the side of the road. And he straps it to his car and tells his wife he got a mattress. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, nobody picks a mattress up off the side of the road that's in the trash. And I'm like, it's a book. Yeah. It could happen. Right. And she's like, 
and she told me she said don't write that she's like find the different way to put it and then i did and it's it's uh i was like oh my god i'm like why did i write that it's happened it's happened a few times but <laughs> there's a, there's always a couple of those yeah <laughs> well that's good uh do you have any advice for people that are looking to go the self-publishing route and wanting to get uh books out there oh definitely um the main one I can say is you're going to get discouraged, extremely discouraged to the point of wanting to just stop writing altogether. Just mm -hmm. keep doing it because the more you do it, the better you get, the harder it gets and the more rewarding it is in the end. And it, I've always found if you don't know how to do something when it comes to marketing or publishing or any of that stuff, uh, you know, go on Facebook, go on writing groups go in the comment thread, ask people stuff. A lot of people you find out either know a lot more than you or you'll find out you're teaching somebody else. And it's always a great feeling when, you know, you teach somebody else like, hey, you can go on Amazon and, you know, put your book up and actually, you know, you won't get a lot of money for it because you're just starting out. But, you know, you'll get a few, you know, you'll get a few bucks. And if you start really marketing correctly, you know, it can go really well for you. Because I know, I know two people right now. Well, I don't know them, know them. I know of them, mm -hmm. uh, who are getting to the point where their part-time job is uh, publishing books on Amazon, and then they have their full-time job. And they've told me they're like, it's shocking that you could actually make money from publishing books on there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's uh, also never. Uh, how do I say this? You're your own worst critic. Yes. You're always going to doubt yourself, but you should never doubt an idea, no matter how crazy it sounds. Also, never write anything down. And I know how that sounds because we're, we're writers. But if you get an idea, do not write out a little summary of what you want it to be about. Let it stick with you for a little bit, you know, we, a week, a month. If you still remember the idea, start writing it. Because I have found that trying to, you know, oh, I come up, with, I came up with an idea, and then I write it down, and then the next day I'm like, why did I think of that? Mm -hmm. Like I have those, honestly, I have those on my phone right now, because I still do it sometimes. And my wife, I'll tell my wife, I'm like, what do you think of this idea? And she'll be like, did you write it down? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, she goes, your best ideas come from you thinking about them for a long time and being like, I gotta get it out. Yeah. I mean, everybody's different. So some people probably do write them down, you know, little summaries and they turn out good. But just from, you know, my own experience, I do not write good books. If, you know, I write out a little summary about what I want it to be about. It's got to, I just got to start from the beginning and, and build my way. Um, and you said your books are on Amazon and Kindle as well. Are they? Are they yeah, under uh, your name? They what? Are they under your name, Rob Novelin? If if people yeah. want to yeah. check out your books and, and buy them and download them? Yeah. Huh? Um the uh the one thing I could say um that I learned uh rather a little bit too late, but I'm I'm fixing it. Mm -hmm. Uh when you're just starting out you should probably not hold yourself to a level like somebody like, uh, you know, VC Andrews or Danielle Steele or Stephen King or, you know, Dean Koontz or any of those people, mm -hmm. because you will, uh, you'll psych yourself out and also never publish your first book and charge $20 for it. Cause nobody wants to read a book by somebody they do not know and pay that much. That's right. I, uh, my, cause my wife said to me, she said, are you sure you want to put this up for $25? I said, Stephen King's books are $25. And she goes, he's been writing since 1970 something. She goes, you just started. And I'm like, oh, so she's, uh, she knows how to do all the, all the Amazon stuff. Mm -hmm. She's trying to teach me. And no matter how much I try to learn, it's like, I'm technically just disabled. 
I cannot. I have no idea. Like she had to get me on the Zoom call. I told her, I said, I said, what's Zoom? And she goes, <laughs> she goes, I know a lot of people have uh, you know, calls that they do at work from home. And I was like, gotta set me up on it. I'm like, I have no idea. Oh, that's perfect. I'm glad that she did that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know how to use Microsoft Word and Google Docs. Yep. And I know how to research stuff. I can look things up on like Google, but as far as like finding out what apps to download, yeah. I have no idea how to do all that stuff. Well, and you don't need to, like if, if your wife's willing to do those things for you, that's beautiful, right? Like that's, she's taking care of the part that a lot of writers don't want to take care of, but yet they have to, right? So, yeah, you know, and, and learning all that stuff, like it's, I'm not, I'm not good at that stuff. Like I'm, I'm not a marketer either, but somehow you find yourself having to learn how to do that and how to market yourself and how to try to get yourself out there. And like I told you before, this is why I have this platform because I want to help people get themselves out there in, in one degree or another. I'm hoping that, you know, this will help direct people to your books, um, boost some sales uh, you know, because I mean, it obviously you you've got a talent. Obviously, you have a a great passion, and you have a message that you want people to to read. And yeah. you know, so you know, I'll put your description down below when I upload it, so that people can go and find your books, and you know, click on them and hopefully buy some. You know. Yeah. It's amazing. I think it's even just publishing one book, but the fact that you've published five and you're still going, <laughs> that's awesome. I think it's amazing. Most people never do that in their lifetime. They might yeah. maybe publish one if if they're lucky, right? Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, you keep going. I mean, you're doing you're doing great. Thank you. Yeah, you're obviously an accomplished author at this point. I I don't think I am. <laughs> But that's because I'm my own worst critic. I, if you ask me, I don't have enough published for, and I started getting unpublished in 2016. Mm -hmm. And I only have the, technically, I mean, I consider it only five books because it's only five you can buy in like paperback. Sure. But I just, I don't know. I'm that person. If I could get two out every year, I'd be thrilled. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's like, I like torture myself with it because I always tell my wife, oh, I should be writing. We shouldn't be going to the movies. And she's like, yeah, but what if the movie gives you a book idea? Good point. And I'm like, and I'm like yeah. And then like tonight, uh, my buddy, he, uh, him and his girlfriend are uh, wanting to go with me and my wife to go bowling. And I told her, I said, oh, I can't do that tonight. Yeah. She goes, why? I said, got a book to write and I said and she said she said you were working on it this morning and then like the afternoon and I said yeah but I got I said I want to write more tonight because I'm like I just finished a chapter I'm on a new one Good. and I want to get a ton and she told me she's like just go bowling she's like you can write she's like after everybody's asleep which is my favorite thing to do it's I'm I don't know if you're like this too but if it's uh if I don't got to work the next day mm -hmm. I'll start writing it around 10 o'clock at night. And next thing I know, when I'm getting to the point where I'm like, oh, uh, all the all the tea is gone because I, I drink a lot of tea when I write, mm -hmm. like a lot, a lot of it. And uh, by the time it's all gone, I'll look at the clock and I'll be like, oh, I've been writing for seven hours. <laughs> and I'm like, where'd the time go? And then the next thing I know, it's like, oh, you're, you know, four, five thousand words in and you're like, oh. Uh, I want to go to bed. I'm like, I'm, I feel, you know, I've done enough for the day. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fun. It's one of those things where I, um, I hate writing, but I like having written. Yeah. That's right. sitting, sitting down to write is like, it's like smelling garbage for the first 20 minutes. And then once that 25, 30 minutes hits and you're, you know, you're, uh, you're typing, 
it starts to feel good. And then you're four or five hours in and you're like, oh, yes. You know, I've gotten all this written. I'm so happy it's finally out. And it's it's like I've, <laughs> I always uh, when people ask me, you know, do you ever run out of ideas? I'm like, no, I have so many that I want to get them out of my head before the day I die. So the books, the books that I have on Amazon, uh, one's called The Things Below. Um, I also have one called Mourning, like like that you're in mourning, like from like a death. Yeah. That's not up yet. That will be up soon. I just realized I never put that up. Mm -hmm. And um, I have a novella called Shoot, like C-H-U-T-E. Okay. Uh, Manifest. Shark Sitter, which is a fun one. Uh, the Woman and High School Hell. Okay, perfect. Um, I will, uh, I'll put your links up in my description so people can access your books, you know, more directly. Thank and, you. Um, then, then actually having to do a find. It's just nicer to, it's right there. And, yeah. um, I'm going to try saying this again. Thank you for coming on the show. I and, appreciate you having me on. It was, it was fun. Yeah. And thanks for sharing your, your knowledge and telling us a little bit about yourself and about your process. Cause I always find that interesting to kind of, kind of hear what other people are doing. Cause you know, you have your own process and it's so isolating when you're, you're doing a painting or you're writing or, you know, doing something like that. It's very solitary. Um, yeah. So it's, it's interesting to always hear what other people's creative processes are. I I'm kind of fascinated by it actually. So um, it's, it's nice that you shared some of that with us today. And um, I, I thank thank you for coming on and I wish you all the best in your sales of your existing books and your future books. Thank um, you. I think that you have way more than five and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I got I've got three that aren't finished yet that I'm working on. That's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's so good. I mean, because uh we need we need really good books out there, you know, something yeah. that's new and interesting because yeah, you know, I'm always looking for a good new book too. So yeah. Yeah. More uh, people more people have to read. Absolutely. I would say that I'm like everybody I'm like it's fun going to the movie theater, but I'm like, go to the Barnes and Noble or something or go on Amazon. I'm like, find a good book. Yeah. Well, there's nothing better than your imagination, right? As you're reading your book, picturing oh, it yeah. in your head. It's the best thing ever. It just kind of takes you away into another world almost, you know? Yeah. That's what I like about it. It just kind of, you know, kind of, it's almost like a vacation. Go now and time can fly. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much. And um, maybe we'll have you back on later in the year and just kind of see where you're at with your, you know, see if you've got a few more books up on Amazon and see where things are headed for you. So, yeah, thanks for joining us and uh, you take care. Oh, thank you. You too. Okay. Bye. Oh, sorry.